I'm going to read one poem. It's called Millie Christine. Millie and Christine McCoy were conjoined twins born in 1851 to parents who were slaves. Joined at the base of their spines, they never decided whether to refer to themselves as I or we. They were stolen as children and smuggled to Europe where they were found by a private investigator and recovered by their owner after a lawsuit. They later became world famous as the two-headed nightingale and the eighth wonder of the world. They died quite wealthy in 1912, owning the plantation they were born on and living in a kind of commune in the big house with their extended family and the descendants of their owners. Millie died first. Christine lived on alone for 17 hours. This poem imagines that brief, interminable interval. If you're interested in form, I'm a formalist, and uh, the form of this poem is uh, rondo, rondo redouble. There are seven rondo redoubles here. And um, although this takes us into the past, I'm very interested in looking to the past for heroes, for presidents, for people who can teach us lessons that are relevant to today. So I'm hoping that that's what this poem will bring to you. Again, it's called Millie Christine. One. Millie, the universal loneliness of singletons from womb to grave alone was not our fate nor the brief happiness of self-forgetting love which makes two one. Our fate surrender to the great unknown creating power that created us to be ourself, to do what must be done. Now I face a universe of loneliness. We've lived a unique double consciousness, black, female, freak, times two. All our life seen by the objectifyingly perverse gape of the normal, who live and die alone. Identical, inoperably conjoined, we have shared one shadow. Yet behind your face, familiar as my own, hide dreams and pain I cannot know, and untold happiness. You sleep and cough. Each breath may be your last, and your death will be the herald of my own. We're inescapable intimates, blessed and cursed with each other, two souls merged into one. We've amassed a trove of memory's gold coin, fame, far-flung travels, purchasing master's house for our family, performing before the queen. Our fate was our fusion. Given the choice, who would choose loneliness? Two. The ancestors believed twins share one soul, one boundaryless self-identity, a paradox of each half's being the whole undivided individuality. With different temperaments from infancy, I've always been duplex, always dual, always both I and at the same time we which indicates that we're not one shared soul. Touted as the eighth wonder of the world, I learn to walk by learning to agree where my four legs would go. I learned to yield to boundaryless double identity. 
Compromise begets camaraderie. I played as I was kidnapped, sold, resold, exhibited, examined. On the sea, I patty caked and prattled. We were a whole. When Master brought Mama to Liverpool, she fainted seeing me. The court's decree declared him owner of the double child, undivided by individuality. Reunited with my enslaved family, I was held apart, fed dainties, schooled, taught the piano. But I wasn't free. Freedom came battles after America pulled into its one shared soul. Three, who am I, ask the reunited states after the war, as if connected twins had punched each other bloody, blind with rage for reasons they couldn't wholly comprehend. I supported my widowed mistress and my kin by my free wills returning to the stage to be gawked at by singleton women and men in freak shows all over the reunited states. Who am I? I asked, mirroring their gaze. At the same time, like them and unlike them a hodgepodge of self-doubt, desires, and praise, but a freak, a two-headed monster, conjoined twins. Reconstructing itself, the nation licked its wounds as industry and expansion, like twin plagues, spread their poisonous microbes on the winds. America was still bloody, still blind with rage. And America trooped to see me. I was amazed by my power to fascinate all kinds of normal Americans and by the ways all of them resembled my freak show friends. Ask a freak where identity begins and ends. Is the midget his height? The fat lady her weight? No, we are each the horizon of a vast mind, each called to contribute something great to our United States. Four. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Step right up. We who are not as others welcome you to find the essence behind our handicap and the compassion beyond your ridicule. Enter the community of the freak show, daily facing congenital hardship, the mule-faced lady, the limbless torso. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, step right up. Watch me practice a new four-legged dance step and rehearse a duet. Watch my four hands sew for the giant's wedding a bridesmaid's gown of crepe. We who are not as others welcome you. But much of history is a freak show, too. Freaks live openly all over the map. Examine the things normal people do, and you'll recognize their essential handicap. Those who exploit innocence, who slay hope, liars and thieves, the greedy and the cruel, those who spend their lives inwardly asleep and who lack compassion are freaks beyond ridicule. If this isn't true, I am a double fool, and I ought to tell my other eye to stop judging the world. 
It's weird, that's all I know. Hey, listen to the limbless torso clap. Come on in, step right up. Five. My color trumped by my celebrity, I toured as the two-headed nightingale. With first-class tickets on every journey, I traveled the sea by steam, the land by rail. Soon a sophisticate with the world my school, I spoke un peu de français with fluency and some espanol, italiano, and deutsch as well. My race was trumped by my celebrity. Meanwhile, back home, black codes ruled the cities, and Chinese immigration was curtailed. The great defeated tribal chiefs exed treaties, while I toured as the two-headed nightingale. Her Majesty Queen Victoria gave me jewels, and the Tsar drove me in a one-horse droshki, while Europeans flooded to Ellis Isle, most of them in steerage for the journey. And Sanford Dole replaced Queen Lilio Kalani. I saw beyond the footlights a freak world where normalcy masks unnatural greed. Sad, I sailed the sea and came home by rail. History produces diamonds and coal. What curses one may be what sets one free. In family gatherings, I was the brightest bell light-footed and warbling in harmony. Aunt, not celebrity. Six, my birth, my mother, my right hands, my chests, my violated privacy, my face, my eyes not hers, my eyes not hers, at least leave me that closet in this huge shared house. My dreams, my doubt, my annoying inner voice, my moment, my memories of the past, my putting myself last, my compromise, my birthday wishes, my hearts in my chests, my being owned, my being self-possessed, my girlhoods of medical exams masking abuse, my years of childhood outrage unexpressed, my violated privacy, my face, my powerless gender, my despised race, my sense of the beautiful, my ugliness, my faith that everyone's here to be of use, my mine alone eyes, my eyes mine alone at least, my thanks that I, we, are among the blessed, my house crawling with nephews and nieces, and the brood of those by whom we were possessed. My silent smile, my closet in this shared house. Outside, the aeroplane, moving picture shows, the advent of ready-to-wear shirt waists, that colored man who went to the North Pole, Einstein, the Model T, my time too fast, my deaths stalking my chest. Seven, pray I will die before Millie grows stiff, my heartbeat crushed by iron calipers. 
pray Millie Christine will depart from life as we came side by side through heaven's door. I'm not afraid. Death's just another tour to a place so impossibly far off no one ever returns. And furthermore, it has no mail service. She's growing stiff. In bed, we used to talk about the grief of being the one left behind for hours. Millie took comfort in her firm belief that her heart would soon be crushed by calipers. So this is independence, lonelier than we imagined, heavier to lift the weight of consciousness not helped by her. Pray Aunt Chrissy will soon be freed from life. The cherubs will be asking for autographs. Millie's making a place for her sister. Peace, children. Always be the better half. We're going side by side through heaven's door. Maybe someday when I am nothing more than playbills, three gold rings, and photographs, we'll be remembered as an ancestor or two. God bless you. Pray I won't be left long while Millie grows sick.